pop them open. Oi, oi. <clears throat> it's a good thing we didn't get hot, Mike. Mm -hmm. We'd be in trouble, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch for that, brother. Yeah. <laughs> How's that audio? Somebody's going to, I'm going to see it here in just a second. <clears throat> yeah. Somebody's going to say something about the audio. Okay. <clears throat> Chat is fast. Yeah, it's been slowed down too, 60 seconds per, per comment. Crazy. Great. Sound check? Good. All good. Awesome. That'll work. <laughs> okay, guys. You get a double whammy today. Actually, you can consider this a 2.5 whammy because I released a pretty good video this morning uh, uh, that was packed with a lot of data, but it really just covers other topics that I've already covered before. I just synthesize them all into one piece. So that's one video you got today. But I also have Atlantic Underground. They'll be releasing their video their video tonight, but I did a two-hour chat with, with uh, Atlantic Underground. I believe he's from the UK as well. Really? What is going on? I don't know. Are y'all trying to pull me? No, you they just, prepper, they just Victoria Z, no, all y'all. No, they just keep you up my way. Man, obviously. <clears throat> don't know them. I would, you know what? I would, I would stick out like a sore thumb in the UK because my voice and my accent already gives me trouble in my own home state. Yeah, well, I get that anyway when I'm at home. But I'm a flat <clears> earther, <throat> so some channels will go near me for that yeah. reason. So, okay, guys, that uh. Uh, I'm going to get with the Paranormies, and I'm going to get them to send me a link to one of the deals so you guys can, Martin and I were on with the Paranormies, and you guys are, uh, I know that they had on one or two of their links was open, open public, I, so I need to find out what it is so I can post it on the channel, you guys can watch it. Also, the Atlantic Underground podcast that I did this morning for two hours, you guys are going get to get to see that tonight, or in the morning, I'm really not sure. Uh, I have a lot of podcasts lined up, but here... We're going to count this as 1.5 right here because Martin is going to take off. I've seen some of these images, and I'm, I'm telling you now, what you're seeing on the screen behind us, that's a real map from 400 and something years ago. That is not a hoax. That's the Jester map, and he's going to tell you all about it. When that map was drawn, somebody already knew that our world is not what you think. It's amazing. So, uh, Martin's about to take off. I'm going to shut up. I just got a couple of announcements, such as... Um, your coins have been mailed out. There's a few. There's a few straggler coins that uh. I got what? There's a few straggler coins, and we need to figure out who they go to because people made orders on Zelle and on Venmo and Cash App that they didn't. They never sent us the addresses to. So we have a handful that we're trying to figure out where they go. Other than that, everybody's everybody's coins are mailed out. Now, um, the meetup on the tenth with Martin and I, and maybe a special guest or two, uh, is a. Uh, uh, it's in Spring Branch. Uh, we'll have the exact address tonight. We already have it. We were just having trouble putting it in in short, such short, no, short notice. But uh, it's in Spring Branch, which is north of Houston, south of the Woodlands, south of Willis. It's uh, basically it's North Houston. So anyway, that's where the meetup's going to be in Spring Branch. And as far as any other announcements, I really don't have any. Uh, on the next. Next live video with Matt and I, we'll probably be doing a thank you session for a bunch of packages of books and stuff we've received. Archaic's library is growing. So, <clears throat> without further ado, Matt, I think, I think uh, we already got 845 people in, man. You want to go ahead and, and start, start slow? Just take us in? Yeah, man. I'm happy to. Shoot. Sure, let's not waste any time with any more okay. Jason talk. Okay, welcome to uh, Archaics and Martin Vitka podcast. Double flat thumbs to infinity. Don't worry about it, that's just my love thing. Today, we're going to talk about maps. This is something I've been studying since my earliest age. I've just had an, uh, an infinity with maps and cartography. So we're going to look at the many mysteries that go with cartography. So it's not all going to be about flat earth maps, by the way. This is going to be about the chronology, starting with the very first maps that humanity is supposed to be presented with. And then we're going to go through what is um, supporting evidence for resets and the idea of a time of vapor canopy. Because some of these maps, the world is 
a green and arid place with a very big beasties and very big people and we're going to be looking into that a little bit later and um we'll see how it goes i don't know how jason's going to feel about it but you know towards the end of my little presentation i was going to try and make you all laugh a little See how that oh yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah. I, I, I seen some of your videos when you yeah. shoot the shit and do all that. Yeah, man, it's, you got yeah. the floor here. So what? What if they're a little bit rude? Is, is that? Gonna be so I, hey, you know what? <laughs> when I'm off camera, it I'm be bad. I'm off camera. I'm a pretty uncouth bastard myself. Is that cool? So, oh, okay then. Well, I'll give you that. So, not any favor to do. So we're going to go through the chronology. I'm going to show you some mysteries. I'm going to show you various images along the way and I'll explain it all as I go so do buckle in I hope you enjoy Martin Flatter of British's chronology of uh, excuse me mappages so we're gonna start here on the earliest one we know let's just see if that's showing up on my uh, on my phone each should be should be <coughs> just a second okay it's not showing up is it Oh, there, there it is. Oh, well, there it is. So we're good. We're fantastic. So what you're looking at here, guys, is the earliest map that they have presented to us. And it is a Babylonian ta tablet with cuneiform on it. And it is a very unusual map. What are they thinking at the time? So what I'm going to present along the way is I'm going to explain to you and show you how we or they have not got a map of this place. The Mac standard Mercator map which we used in schools, etc. Uh, um, Over-exaggerated uh, things like Greenland or under-exaggerated continents like Africa. So these maps are politically motivated, you could say, where they inflate countries. But it, all the while, it's displacing millions of square miles of water that are just covered with fictitious lands on the map. They say... That the only realistic maps we have in the modern day are the Gaul Peters map, which show a thinner, slender continent. But regardless of that, we haven't got a map of this place. And there's a big question with the cartography, like, how did they pull this off? How did these wooden ships manage to go every single cove around the entire plain? And, you know, when, you know, let's, for example, the north is supposed to be covered with tundra and snow, yet you've got you know really detailed cartography of no norway for example which is a fantastical thing so the idea is um, in a lot of academia is they have been borrowed these maps from earlier cartographers yeah post or pre reset i should say cartographers and what these uh, some of these middle ages maps that i'm going to go through you will show is a completely different realm um, nowhere is where it's supposed to be and America and other places look completely different so this is the earliest what is their frame of reference and what are we looking at well we're looking at a T so um, I'm getting the gist of what we're looking at here possibly is maybe Asia and Europe there's a center bit so is that meridian possibly and I notice there's a line at the bottom but overall it's in a circular ring um, which could be you know their idea of the ice wall that goes all the way around us and these uh, pyramidical things which you see on a lot of early Middle Ages maps which you know could be you know sort of gates or what have you but it's a very interesting map I'd love to be able to recure for and find out exactly what it says but there you go so what you find in these early maps is you do not see any snow anywhere in the world no snow um, Africa as you can see here is completely green um, the Middle East completely green, the Gobi Desert completely green um, everywhere in this world is completely green. There doesn't seem to be any deserted areas or even any ice except for this, but this is an oriental 1500s map but it's really intriguing because what you've got here is if you can make out the whole of Asia and I guess in this is Great Britain and the Iberian Peninsula um, what this is here I'm wow. guessing is the Americas, but I, I'm not actually <coughs> sure because it, you know, at the top bit it looks like you know the Bering Straits, but the rest of it, um, this is supposed to be North America. I'm guessing this is Central America, and I'm guessing this is South. But South America doesn't belly out like that, have a large lake and a large island in the lake anyway. But it is down, you know, near this, uh, what looks like an icy region, which is what they call Antarctica, which I, you know, do not think is what they're saying whatsoever. 
So what you find predominantly, only at certain periods in the maps, is it's showing Island California. I can't imagine what academia um, explains this away on numerous maps, but it definitely shows that at some time in the recent past, uh, California was an island. Yeah, I had these maps I've seen. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah. So <coughs> the, the standard narrative, uh, they, they, you know, they're not hiding the fact that you know that there was greenness and beasts in Antarctica. You know, Graham Hancock, I mean Hancock, um, he explains in Fingerprints of a God. Uh, no, uh, yeah, which is over by there. Actually. I have fingerprints right here. Uh, yes, behind the shirt. Yeah. So uh, he explains how Pierre Reese, the uh, Turkish admiral. Um, had maps which showed um, a green um, and populated Antarctica and um, what Graham Hancock says is Pierre Reese have stated or decided to say in that he got his cartography or his maps from a much much earlier so if he's a middle ages cartographer or a map maker and he says that oh, he's got these from earlier cartography then we're looking at old world maps in some of these examples you know what you get is a definite distinction between cartography you get this middle ages um the only way i can explain it is a whole lot of nonsense you know it's really poor cartography or this is the world that really was you know that there's a really messed up um i'm very southern hudson Bay, which makes no sense whatsoever. Look, California's separated on this one as well. And how far out is it it's as well? And you've got the same islands in there. Man, that's far off, far off. Yeah. <clears throat> that, yeah. Br that brings the Pacific all the way into, like, Texas region. Yeah. El Paso, see? Yeah. So what do you make of that? Because it's like, you know, it's either messed up cartography. I just drove through all that and did a video explaining that this looks like it was just recently underwater. Well, look, well this, one, this looks like, doesn't it? It looks like all of this, you know. And That's then, amazing. I, I'll show you later on, right, examples of a mud flood um, of a topography on a, in Oregon. Arizona, okay? Arizona and New Mexico look just like they were underwater just a few centuries ago. Yeah. And I was, I, I was videotaping all these, all these anomalies that looks like a massive amount of water very quickly just rushed through this area. So that's there. And here it is on, here it is in the map. Yeah. So that is a, that's a messed up, you know, Middle Ages map. It's either really poor photography and that, or that is the world we're looking at. <coughs> well, I got this one for you, Jason. I thought you might be interested. You may not have seen this, but it's an old map of Cairo. And what it shows here is the pyramids of Giza are what on, look like mesas mm -hmm. or possibly giant tree trunks. So there's the Sphinx. Here's the three pyramids of Giza. This is the Giza Plateau and the other pyramids going further south. Yeah. That's so amazing. why it shows them on stony mesas and all of these look like they're tree trunks anyway, don't they? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And um, obviously it's not deserty really, or it's maybe in the distance. But yeah, I can't imagine why they're on mesas or what looks like tree trunks. I haven't got clue. clue you, know, you know the root in Giza means stock of a tree? No. The root the root word in Giza yeah. literally means the stock of a tree. Oh, isn't that and interesting? And I'm telling you now where I got this information. Listen, the, uh, my first published book is Lost Scriptures of Giza. Hmm. And, I, yeah, and, and I went deep into the etymology of everything related to the Great Pyramid. Hmm. And one of the things I pulled up, and anybody can see it like in the strongest concordance of hmm. the Bible. You can look at the Aramaic and the, and the, and the Greek and the Hebrew lexicons. Mm -hmm. and, and everywhere you see... Giza is derived from G I Z E E H. Uh, e -H. Hmm. When you look that word up, it is the stock of a tree, and it says, for example, oh. a pillar. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah, oh, I never knew that. That's crazy. So, um, yeah, these maps um, are an illustrated um, photographer work from um, like 1490s, so they're really, really early. You haven't got a specific meridian or what you find. Like the meridian today that we've got is Greenwich Mean Time, isn't it? You know, the zero point. And that's used for all mariners. But in the past, um, meridian has been, you know, suggested to be um, Cairo or the pyramids. And in other um, narratives as well, that Jerusalem was once uh, meridian. But what you see in these old world maps is this. Now the Iberian Peninsula is full of glittering buildings, it's all green and lush. Mm -hmm. There is no deserty bits or Arab bits. North Africa, this is Bavaria, mm -hmm. as you can see here. Mm -hmm. And what would have been, you know, the Carthaginian Empire way back. But what you see mm -hmm. is a load of what look like European style um, palaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it's green, 
and it has mountain ranges one of which is called Kong there's a Lake Kong there today where the mountain range is no longer and you get deeper into the Libya uh, interior and you've got what are essentially deciduous trees so this place is a completely different climate and you know full of these palaces none of which are there you know today if they are they're in the sand yeah the only architectural structures in all of sub-saharan africa mm. are, are the zimbabwe structures you know what i mean mm. so well it's an interesting that this is north africa but the people are white caucasian and they're naked and they're being chased around by really large beasties. Look at the size, human-sized birds, yeah? This is Voynich manuscript type it's, stuff. It is very similar. I get, I'll show you an example of the Voynich, a clue I found with it um, a bit later. But indeed, it, it is. It's, you get a lot of giant beasts, a lot of, um, well, cryptids you see as well. But yeah, look at the interior. Did I get copies of this in those 55,000 Oh, you got files? all of this. I got all this? All of this. Man, you guys are in trouble. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, so it gets to the standard sort of Mercator type projections a little bit later, you know, when you're coming up to the 1700s, as you can see here, uh, you know, this is a really interesting map concerning Tartaria, uh, Grand Tartary, because it actually includes India, Persia, Arabia, and the Levant, the Holy Land, and Japan, and Seoul, Southeast Asia, and New Holland, which is interestingly <coughs> what they once called Australia, is also the same colour as Tataria, which sort of suggests that Australia, at some time in the past, would have been Tatarian territory. Which uh, would you again, what is the date on this map? Because California is completely separate from uh, indeed. So I've been trying the to continent. Yeah. So um, what you find is a couple of these. You know, I'm going through these maps. The first thing I check for is dates. Okay. I can only see by map amounts that we're looking at somewhere around um, 1710, around that era, and it's still showing as Island California. Yeah. I, I can't even find a transition point. Now we got like four Great Lakes. I can't see Lake Erie, maybe. But other maps, there's no Great Lakes. Some maps only fall. Well, great they, lakes. the Great Lakes only appeared in maps after the 1620s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and um, Lake uh, and um, Hudson Bay is always like really deformed and like it doesn't look like that in modern day maps anyway. And this great extremity at the top of Canada, northern Canada, it's like what, what the hell is it really? You know. But yeah, you can see that half the world even then was uh, Tataria. Let's just see if I can pick it. Yeah. 1714. That's not bad for dating. I was four years old. <laughs> there. 1714. A J7 14. Yeah. So I was four years old. Oh my god. That's amazing. Yeah, I can identify dates on that. <coughs> so, this one's a nice early one. Okay. And it's showing um, what you find is it's upside down maps. I think it's a clue myself. You know, I think all the juice is in the north at this time. And you get a predominantly you know it's like you're looking at the realm but you're looking at it from a north pole perspective you're looking down the earth and that's how a lot of the old world maps are actually shown guys yeah so as you can see uh, you know europe is upside down all half this map is up well all of this map is upside down until you get to africa and then it shows you the right way up so i think there's a clue with um, the map showing you to be upside down and you get these strange uh, compass points here, yeah. and you know these, um, you know these navigation lines and all of that. I can't work out, you know, what these these designate, you know, with uh, maritime uh, navigational rules. I can't work it out. I really can't. They just look, look like they're nodal points being mapped to me. So here's a nice juicy early map, but it shows you all of this going on. Now it's either keep out signs, don't go to Antarctica. There's nasty stuff. But what it does show is, you know, a sort of Christian idea of, I'm guessing, beating evil with the night. You've got the Gorgon type affair, half serpent, with the lizards in her hair as well. And Diablos, so you've got the devil, who's got like a three hour thing going on. And death, but you've got the Moors here, for some reason, which is interesting because the Moors are attributed to being Tatarians. What date we got on it? Sunday there says 1317, that could be a page number. But all of that's supposed to be happening in a place that's full of ice on maps. Uh, but the map is closer to what you would see on a Mercator, uh, today's Mercator, which I'll show you are exaggerated in every regard. 
Mm -hmm. <coughs> so this is a really interesting because it gives you some language. We give you gives you Persian language, and it gives you. Oh boy, well, this is Latin. Yeah. So there's some Latin in there too. Yeah. So the only uh, interesting thing I want to just point out for later on is if you look here, there's a giant lake here in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. I just draw that to your attention because I'm going to show you later on. But again, you've got Island California. I can only see five great, four great lakes here. I can't see an Erie. And plus, they don't look like that. Mm -hmm. Lake Superior is facing this way. Um, the lakes are all perverted. They don't look that way, is what I'm saying. Okay? So there's something going on with the uh, photography for the Great Lakes. The, re the rest, sometimes you see um, an under-exaggerated power handle. In others, it's a lot bigger, you know? There's something going on with that. Maybe Florida was um, a lot bigger um, in the old days, and then that terrible flood happened, okay? Mm -hmm. So early maps also, you can find um, images um, on paintings, actually, online, of people standing by the lakes in Australia mm -hmm. in the early 1800s so apparently there was an inland sea in australia which has been mapped an inland sea in australia which has been mapped okay now this part up here of northern australia is sort of swampy and jungle like but you know it's dried out but that just sort of shows that this place was completely different and inundated at some stage the waters have receded phoenicia the phoenicians the mysterious sea people that appeared and um, sort of occupied this era and then they've just dispersed, dispersed out into the whole of society where they do their they where they do their evil works let's just put it that way but that's where they were so it's the holy land was all Phoenicia and Cyprus was a Phoenician colony as well and that's where they were they said the Carthage all the Carthage was settled by them yeah indeed. The Carthaginians yeah Cyprus Sardinia yeah uh, Sicily, all of them were so settled by them. Well, Haisha, I've seen um, a book about early Haitians. Haisha in Caribbean, Haisha, Phoenician, Haitian, Phoenician, <coughs> and the language is uh, phonetics, and they were there very early on in the Caribbean. So, this is a really interesting map. Western Canada, this 1768. Is, this is four years after the 1764 Phoenix reset. Well, that is interesting. It's four years after. Because everything looks completely it's different. completely different than the earlier maps. Yeah. So I'm guessing this is the Bering Straits, and Alaska's coming over predominantly too far west. It doesn't look like that. And you've got, like, where's the Fox Archipelago? Is it this year? I don't know. But it makes no sense. It looks nothing like that. But then you've got all this strange, bashed-up topography down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So that's a really interesting map. The world doesn't look like that at all. No, 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 no. Not anymore. Not anymore. <clears throat> and nor would it if California had been reattached. So I wish I could find the source for this map so I could verify it a couple of times. It looks crudely made. So, uh, you know, I'm going on like Africa looks messed up and everything else looks messed up. You've got all of this, which is super interesting. Because it shows Antarctica, populated, named, you know. They know all of the names, so they've gone to the effort to do that. There's this large city here, Phoenicia here. Maybe that's where they originally came from and then they just populated the Levant, you know. And the mysterious sea peoples turned up from somewhere. Terra Sancta. Sanctuary. Mm, that is interesting. And you get a lot of sort of uh, Phoenician sort of, uh, you know, phallax, phallax, and sort of Phoenician Roman, what you call it, um, names. So why did they go into the effort to map all of that, which is supposed to be south of us, but it's all around us, is beyond me. Again, early American. Florida is where we are now in Texas, but all of that part of America was called Florida. It was populated by not exactly what you might call Native American Indians, more um, six foot four and um, Caucasian people is what um, the early explorers actually discovered. So what's that body of water? So there's a large body of water that is in basically west of Texas. It is literally all the way to California. It looks like to be finishing where maybe the San Andreas Fault is. I don't know. But there's a giant inland sea in America on this map. And there's not a hint of the Grand Canyon here, which should be on a map because the Grand Canyon is 277 miles long and many, many miles wide. Okay. So every map should show the Grand Canyon if it was, if it, if it was there at that time. 
because the now uh, I was recently at the Grand Canyon, and I'm telling you, when John and I went out on, onto that glass deck, there's a glass deck you walk out Whoa. on. It's four thousand feet above. So we listen. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, don't jump up the top. I'm going to tell you something about the Grand Canyon that I immediately noticed. Mm-hmm. For if this, according to the uniformitarian theory, this is supposed to be millions of years old. Mm-hmm. And if it is, why isn't the bottom full of rubble from all the earthquakes, boulders? Yeah, you would, can see boulders sticking out both sides. That's a good point. And they're like nothing holding them. It's like it's like mm. you. It looks like you take a hammer and hit them, and, a, and you'll, you'll, an avalanche will that's happen. Mad. So if the Grand Canyon is so ancient, why hasn't all this rubble shaking loose? No man, it has to be recent. It's it very has to be recent. recent. It's very recent. There's no doubt. Yeah, that'd be an amazing thing. To see. <clears throat> so yeah, that's interesting. It's not mapped. Yeah, it's 277 miles long. It should be on all the maps. So um, what we see here is Oregon, and um, I'll show you the example that this map has come from. It's a beautiful silver plate, um, early map dated. Um, but where Oregon is, is a giant inland lake. They got it named. There's islands inside, which are other maps are also named. And on the topographical map, which you can see here, is this area here would have been a lake. And there is a depression there. But also, if you can see by here, these uh, this brown bit is mud flats. There was like this, there's literally a recorded mud flood in Oregon, which you can do research about an official version. Hmm. Yeah, um, so where they connected the sea, and I can't help thinking this is what's happened with California. Is there's just been a huge event. It's literally decimated the southern states, and the mud flow is connected. You know, California. Which is by where the San Andreas Fault is today, you know, some sort of, you know, mud flow all that way. So this is a Kirshner map. You know about uh, Kirshner, don't you? You probably yeah. it. So it's a post um, deluge map, and, but what it does show is the tides. And what it shows is a giant land mass above us, which you're going to see on um, Mercator maps and the famous Mercator projection of four continents in the North Pole. Are they there? Are they not? How the hell can we know, guys? And um, all the volcanoes as well, which is definitely a player. The, the ring of fire is definitely a part of this mechanism. Like you said about volcanoes being a part of the artificial mechanism. So this is an, a... The Japanese do some absolutely stunning maps, but this one here is showing what looks like an arid, dry, free from ice because there's supposed to be miles and miles of ice flow all the way to the ice wall. So how would you get in to actually do any cartography? Maybe they've got high-end lasers or something. They've got ground penetrating equipment to do this all cartography because they manage to do all the little islandlets and chart out all of this coast of whatever this is. And Tierra del Fuego means, you know, land of fire. So, you know, this place is icy, so, okay, maybe volcanicity. Damn, it's it. called Del Fuego? Yeah, crazy. Land of Fire. And yet it's in what is supposed to be, you know. You're right. Yeah, Land of Fire. So, mm. um, and then you've got these large beasts, you know, it's populated with beasts. If you see anything on YouTube, they show you some weirdo there, like mm-hmm. Patriot Krill or something. Go and look at some penguins. All oh, penguins are epic. But there got to be more going on, okay? <laughs> there got to be more going on. I can see some anomalies as well with India, and I'll show on some other maps. But what we got for America is zero in the way of... I'm not sure if that one big blob there is a great lake. It's on the river St. Lawrence, it must be. So we've only got one lake. And everything's looking green. Everything is connected up by here again. And Mexico City is a circle here. We're going to look at that image of Mexico City and wonder what the hell is going on with that a little bit later. But America looks a damn sight bigger on this. You know, this is uh, supposed to be... What's all this? What, why, why is... Okay, so this is Mexico. This is California. So what is all of this greenness over here? Almost as if we're, there's no Pacific and we're connected to the you know, Asian continent. Yeah, man. So how is that? <coughs> I'm guessing this is the Rockies, there, <coughs> there, which it is, and then you've got all of this land, which is not actually there, is it, in the modern day, all the way to Papua New Guinea, all that land. So that's a bit unexplained, while they would go to the effort to, you know, map out somewhere that's not there in the modern day. Really peculiar one, that. 
very very interesting map that one here's a, a crude uh, middle ages map this is 1400s okay and it, it's always biblical themed because you know they show you the red sea is a red sea but again green and pastured uh, north africa uh, there is no sahara desert at this period this looks to be attributed to the knights templar because of the red crosses so this is jerusalem's marked up so we're looking at this is depicting the events of like the 1300 and you know the crusades etc okay um but again you know if this is you know this is the early discovery of america time apparently but they managed to uh, do some decent photography on the caribbean and the venezuelan coast all the way down uh, for this far to the end of the chat they haven't done any more so that is a really early piece of photography all of this in america is you know i reckon it was underwater later which is why you know they the waters you know receded uh so they call it you know columbus narrative bullshit bullshit and then it's like oh we got the new world let's populate it when in fact it's the old world it was there all along it's just been messed up and underwater does that make sense mm -hmm. so i think that's what's going on so an old orbis map here of america and as you can see you got this giant continent at the bottom again well obviously you know uh, antarctica doesn't come up to the tropic of cancer because basically um, it would be subtropical and that's not happening with antarctica is it so you know terra australis they're saying that's another name for as well uh for australia but it's australia is not connected to papua new guinea at all but it is on this and a very very populated antarctica down in fiera del fuego <coughs> and the cartography seems to be a bit misshapen but you get here and it's all back together again so california's back <laughs> and it resembles what it looks like in the modern day but again no great lakes how can you miss the great lakes they're the biggest lakes in the world and they're there so yeah river st lawrence goes like absolutely nowhere no great lakes they could have been later mining operations. Yeah, they're bigger than like the Sea of Azores and, and, yeah. and, and a bunch of little seas in the Central Asia and, and, and uh, Middle East and so. Curiously though, they're that big, and but they have no tides. So they're that bigger bodies of water that have no tides, proving in my head that there's no correlation between the moon causing any tides in this place, which is the case. So, damn, I never thought about that. The Great Lakes don't exhibit tides? No, nor the Black Sea, nor the Caspian Sea. Nor the, the, dead, nor the, the dead, nor the Dead Sea? No. Nor Lake Livingston? No. Lake Conroe? No. All right, man. No tides. No tides on it. No tides. No, man. Another interesting thing is icebergs, even though, you know, people say, you know, they're real or not, I think they have, but they're made of fresh water. Yes, they are. So where's all that fresh water going? So you get on these sort of maps, Makita definitely paint, uh, you know, did this sort of uh, imagery as well, of hostile giants usually waiting, you know, look at the size of them in retrospect to the, to the ship. But they've literally got maps of these four continents. Yeah, they're populated, one's populated by pygmies, the rivers and the Euphrates and the Tigris, like replicated names of what's in, uh, what's in uh, Persia which is really interesting and you get down um, it's getting a little bit more like what you'd see today and California's all connected what this um, east to west mountain range is I'm not quite sure because the Rockies go up that way is that the Appalachian Appalachians no that's further south oh can't work that out but anyway so they show you these lands above which um, a lot of people have said oh it's all there you know we can't go there guys we can't go there it, i've shown if you watch um, the next level movie i was in they show you imagery on there some guys that tried to go just sailing with their sailing boat to north pole they only to be met by, met by a norwegian destroyer which threatens to blow them out of the water if they don't turn around and go away why why can't you just sail in what is supposed to be a frozen ocean everything's covered up so using an uh, early parchment uh, made of um, animal skin map um, Christian themed again upside down half of it but what it is showing and this is a late 1400s map so America hasn't hardly been discovered yet but yet they've gone to the effort to do this rough cartography you can see it's not defined at all but it's massive it is uh, a massive uh, undertaking 
that really crude, crude photo uh, photography. What this pyramid is here, I don't know. Is a giant pyramid where Southeast Asia should be. You is know. that Southeast Asia or Indonesia? Or uh, well, that would be Indonesia, yeah, or um, Borneo, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing, Sumatra. But yeah, so what that is, <coughs> there's giant bodies there, so I'm guessing they're the islands, but why that one's a pyramid, I do not know. It's a pyramid with an eyeball. Yeah, it's a pyramid with an eyeball. Well, I wish I would uh, clear up a little bit. But yeah, that's a really early parchment. So. Uh, this one's an, er an early azimuth equidistant, so it's looking down from a North Pole perspective. Uh, so what all of this green bit is up here, I'm not quite sure, it's the Scandinavia. It doesn't look like that anymore. So this is a bit crude, but it does show the Americas. What we get on a lot of uh, maps as well, guys, a lot of uh, um, added islands and lands like High Brazil off of Western Islands and um, Gronland and now that's Greenland. Um, Friesland, excuse me, and there's giant islands out in the Atlantic which are no longer there today. And again, there's a really, really populated North African coast. Some terrible thing happened to the, to the Mediterranean. I feel that there, this wasn't always a giant uh, inland sea, because that's what it is. Nope. <coughs> I, got a lot, I got a lot of material on my own channel, how it was a, a series of freshwater valleys. And it filled up when they straight at Gibraltar. See the Pillar of Hercules over yeah, there? Yeah, sure. It, it broke free and sent a, a 400 mile an hour tsunami of the Atlantic came in here yeah. and washed over Sicily and archaeologists have found the destruction. It hit Malta and knocked 40 ton blocks in Malta over a mile and laid them all out on the ocean sea. Shit, yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, that definitely happens. There are there are over three hundred stone cities below the wall, below below the sea in uh, the Mediterranean. Wow! And this has been published by David Hatcher Childers. It's the subject of several several scuba diving books. What you make of the Antiquita device that was found? Um, it's, it's found in, in nineteen hundred by sponge divers off of Crete. Mm. Uh, they didn't know what they had, and they put it up for a year. And in 1901, somebody took it out, and they cleaned it off, and they realized, holy shit, look at it. This is a differential geared computer type thing. The cocks were really minute, yes. like a Swiss watch. So this, 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 in 1901, it became public knowledge that they found some type of unique star lab or something. But in 1902, they actually cleaned it all the way up. Uh, did a scientific analysis of it mm. and found some Greek lettering on it, and they realized, okay, this is this is about 100 BC, and it was and it was designed to predict the motion of of st stellar bodies forward and backward in time. Mm. It's pretty interesting. So it's an astronomical clock. It's basically what oh, it is. How could they how could they do that? How could they even know? <clears throat> well, I say I say it all the time. It takes us 200 years to go from horse and buggy to hadron colliders. Yeah, well, that's, that's because I'm going to tell you now. The anti-Kathera computer, the the technology required to to manufacture a differential geared mechanism like that yeah, is more sophisticated than the mechanism itself. Wow. So we're talking about they must have had a hell of an infrastructure around. Yeah, proper real machinery, machining. Yeah. They were doing machining. machine parts yeah, in 200 BC. Back. Yeah, I can, no I doubt. Can dig that. Yeah, that's crazy. No doubt. So um, this is a fantastic map. This got found by um, Rod Skiba, RIP, um, who found it in the um, Rams Ramsey Library. Rod uh, Skiba found this map. Map Skiba just shit out of nowhere. I was absolutely spewing, wishing I'd found it. <laughs> so how you find that? I'm always in Ramsey's, but it's, you showed that with it there, Rob. Um, and it's the Abarano Monte map, the 1590s map, and it just shows, um, uh, you know, many, there's many YouTube videos where you can see this thing being decoded, okay, guys, it shows you the four continents in the middle, it's really good cartography for such an early period, but the most defined things are all of the continents, or all of this greenness, all the way around us, which show numerous beasts, numerous, um, Cryptids, etc., Sinosophia and uh, Bellinis, that type of thing. So, sorry, I can't clear that up. But a Bano Monte map, look for that online. You can get some, you know, high definition downloads and check it out. Going close, there is a million and one things you can discover with your Bano Monte map. It's fantastic. And it's a flat earth, as you know, for like a distant map. Shows all of that stuff all the way around us. Is that the case? Did it get covered in ice? Here's a really early, interesting, you see people here going into architecture with torches. Uh, I don't know what that would signify, but an early azimuthal equidistant. And um, you've got the Great Lakes, everything's 
it's not connected in the northern part. Is it possible that all of this bit is still underwater? I'm wondering. Yeah, could be. Because um, you can see this green bit over here. Um, I'm guessing that we're, this is Greenland here, this top bit here, but nothing in between has been mapped, which is really interesting. And the green of this Gronland here going all the way to the North Pole. Now, for a start off, you know, the Danes calling Greenland Greenland when it's supposed to be really white and a really high elevation so nobody can live there, mm -hmm. um, is green when they arrive there. And you can see that it goes all the way to what is the apparent North Pole. Now, wow. isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting why they would do that? So, nice um, photography looking down um, you know, from North Pole perspective. They nailed that one. And, you know, really good quality work. 1700s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think 1704 or something like that. Uh, 1724 for that. Nice. So, really you know, you know, the photography comes on tenfold, but you know, this stuff is like rudimentary, really rough, but they get the shape of, uh, you know, Africa. But again, it's looking down from a, I think I feel like with this in perspective, and what you do not get on any of these is an Antarctica. Uh, really unusual, uh, South America, which is just whited out, no definitions. North America is not actually on there. Hey, Nicholas James yeah. Adderton, you know him, don't you? Yes, Nicholas, yeah. yeah. He says, man, I remember when you had 50 subs, man. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, you've been <laughs> around a while, brother. <laughs> Flat thumbs to you, much love. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so it's, isn't it weird how many of these show, when you get the island California, you get the Great Lakes missing at the same time, and this weird sort of Hudson Bay affair. So, no Great Lakes, um, the interior seems to be unmapped, and then, you know, a really well-mapped uh, island California, which is just weird. Why didn't they teach, about, teach us about this in school? It is beyond me. But, yeah. yeah. Listen, if they have, if they've gone three and four thousand miles into the interior of South, South America to accurately depict riverbeds and canyons that way. Yeah then we have to assume that California was totally accurate as well. Well, I do. I yeah, do. look at that. Yeah, really California do. is an entirely different... It's it's an entirely different island, right? but it's huge. It's almost continent size. So, yeah, um, North Africa. Um, today is Sahara Desert and Arab-like, um, but in the past, it's apparently a more European-themed. Um, you can see these giant palaces, but they are definitely Moors, or what you call Muslims at that period. But all you can see is like European style, style kings, and as you can see, the power in this place at that time is Caucasian, and not what it is in one day. But they are Muslims, as you can see. And then the map turns upside down, you can see this giant tower, <coughs> which I'm suggesting I think is probably you know, maybe Babylon. No, it's not. It needs to be further at the least. But anyway, green and pleasant, full of uh, European architecture, what's going on? Uh, this is a nice little depiction of Africa. Somebody's gone to the effort. That's much more what you'd expect. The thing is, is they've got everything growing there and everything they need. You know, that could happen for us, guys. You know, if you imagine that... Okay, mine just now. Oh, right, that's it. Now they can see what you're talking about. Yeah, um, imagine being able to, you know, everything was fruit and tomatoes and everything just growing in all of the streets. So the food was free for everybody. And, you know, you could just walk past and get your food for the day, which would be completely possible and really easy to do. But they don't do it, do they? So I don't know, show what's going on up here. This sort of uh, landscape looks really unusual. And one thing I can see is this giant arch and what looks like a building where there seems to be some sort of battle which has been shattered which has been ruined in the background here exactly the same sort of architecture up in the in the north but that's uh what is looks to be the west so that's a really unusual medieval map and there's the classic mercator where he's mapped basically uh polar antarct and and Arcticus, which is Mount Meru. Uh, many people think there's a magnetic mountain in the centre. Um, I proposed to myself that I thought it might have been somewhere in the region of an upside down pyramid, a bit like what they get in uh, the Divine Comedy, Dante's Inferno, okay, with the upside down pyramid, the journey to hell. Something along those lines that is like a car speaker which gives off an acoustic fre frequency 
which keeps the dome in place because sound keeps water in stasis and there's always a some sort of hum in this place but you know that's just the nature of simulation so <laughs> you get these deltas these are mapped by you know pygmies live in these ones giants live on one so there's these four continents and they're all surrounded by mountains can you see that um, and then there's narratives out there that it's the gas and the weeds and, and you know vibrationally it is there and you can only perceive it if you're pure of, a pure of heart yeah this is a, a land for each luncher. this island here is no longer there and it's south of Iceland. Iceland's still there, a messed up place, Bokemoy's wise, but this Friesland, no longer there. Greenland, Gronland, it's green at that period. No ice, no snow. And this part up here, there's loads of stories. The story of Olaf Johnson, who sailed to the North Pole when he went past the North Pole, okay? It was like a summer's day in Amsterdam, a spring day in Amsterdam, so it was warm. Um, also, he went down a wooden ship and all of the nails just came out of the ship. Ping, ping, ping. Because there was a great magnetic force there when they got closer to the North Pole. So, you know, it's many, many questions with these maps. You know, why you go to the effort to, you know, um, you know, remember this is an ocean. It's the smallest ocean on Earth, it's the Arctic Ocean, but it's an ocean. We know nothing about it. None of us are ever able to go there. The aircraft are not doing it, flights, etc. Nobody's looking at this place, but they tell you it's a frozen ocean. But it's only thin in the middle because um, a nuclear submarine from Russia can come up. So, in official narrative, they're not hiding the fact that Rush, uh, the, the Sahara Desert. Okay, brother. The Sahara Desert was once a lush and populated place, okay? something completely um, apocalyptic back to this place guys and turned it to dust i have theorized that this was probably um there was an epic war possibly but like tataria and phoenicia and electromagnetic weaponry like the fasces for example uh, turned this place to dust because it is dust it's not sand because they have dust storms dust sand, sand storm type of dust storms in the sahara okay red dust very very fine so um this is apparently from 300 um it's a later obviously map this wasn't when it was made but it's supposed to be baghdad 300 a.d and it's just a round circular city which looks like something from a circuit board for the ancient world you got the exact same circular city for jerusalem on the map of monday from 1290 which i was going to show you that cut kind of too short, too, too small an image. So they tell you this in official narrative that this what was what Europe looked like, and Britain would have been in this massive, you know, land belt, Dogger Bank or Doggerland. So you were able to walk across from England all the way to Denmark and all the way to Lake Men mainland Europe through um, just across the land. Okay. And Dogger Bank is certainly there today. It's a sand bank. You've got a dodge when um, in shipping when you're in the North Sea. Um, but this is, you know, there. Don't take a notice of the Ice Shop 1600 because I don't go with Ice Age and do not go with glaciation, you know, carving up the land. That was an event with that that did all of that and rapid. So they have brought uh, remains up from Doggerlands. There was definitely a civilization there, but. Um, um, Jason was telling me from a book we were, we were going through, there's one narrative that East Anglia um, was built on the deposit of bones, of human bones, um, and sort of vegetation and stuff. What was that about Norfolk, Jason? The, the, what was that book we were going through? Mm -hmm. Where Norfolk was, this part here is Norfolk, in England was built on, on, on top of bones, was it? Oh, from 1834. Yeah, from 1834. What was oh. that all about? Because I was mad. I was mad. That's that's it there. Oh, it's the one I did a video on. Yeah. And it I was... showed all the paragraphs. Okay, that was 1871. Hmm. And he was disproving. He, re, he was showing that uh, the Ice Age was all the data for the Ice Age what? actually actually meant something else. And the Ice Age was false. Yeah. And he was publishing that in 1871 saying the Uniformitarians were lying. It was actually a huge flood that came through the area. Hmm. And that Norfolk, Norfolk is like uh, 60 feet of pure, pure clay on top of a bed of animal parts. Where the animals were all glued together and they're all megafauna with human skeletons. And the entire stretch of ocean connecting Europe to Norfolk 
uh, in the UK is like a, is like where all all the organisms that were bloated and floating in the world from the floor ended up at Norfolk and then went down. And then, and then water came over and clay buried them. It's, it's one of the largest coal seams in the world. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> and that's Norfolk. Yeah, they, they call it, it's just completely flat, Norfolk. And they got the part here, which is always bloody called the Fens, which apparently got <coughs> dug out in the medieval period. Yeah, on the surface topography, Norfolk is like unremarkable. But the geologists have found that underneath Norfolk is one of the richest fossil beds for megafauna in the world. Wow. It's crazy. So this might upset a few people in Britain, but just tough. <laughs> so here's um, 500 AD, apparently. Britain, okay, was predominantly Welsh, according to this map. Now later, when, you know, apparently the Norman, the Saxons came, apparently this place, the, the island was called predominantly, you had Wessex in the south, you have Mercia. And Mercia, Mer, is sea. And it, so the place was called um, Mercy, like the sea. Um, and then on this map, it shows you the you know most of mainland England and Wales and Cornwall and Devon, all the way to London. Really, was Welsh speaking a Welsh territory, and the Welsh language has been crushed. Yeah, when I was uh, young, um, people were telling me that when they were in school, they were punished if they were caught speaking their native language. So that's not good. <clears throat> so I'm not sure what's happening here. Oh, it's a weather report. Okay. It's going to get a bit... What's going on there? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where that came from. It just slipped out. No, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. Okay? Sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> that's terrible weather report. Sorry. Man. Sorry, it's a bad weather report. You know, he should have thought about what he was doing. Maybe but he's know. a weather man. I'm pretty sure he was wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's only a prediction. So this is an interesting little Dutch map that they use as a projection um, for in the war. Um, and basically it's an azimuth equidistant, but again it shows you an ice wall all the way around. You know, there's no Antarctica, exactly the same thing as they show you on the UN flag. Okay. Now this is the most interesting thing. I've, if you watch my channel, you're going to know that I've picked this thing apart a hundred times. We've tried our best to decode it. The Phoenicians are present. Um, but it's, uh, you know, the divine comedy. If you think of, you know, the jester is always the most intelligent person in the royal household, okay, in the court. Um, the king tells him most stuff, but he makes jolly because anybody with a sense of humor just shows, just, that just is, shows intelligence, don't they? But there's so many clues. We add some of this Latin, he say. I can't even, I can't even show you. Yeah, it's coming up. Here. It's showing, you can My see it. My whole leg is nothing but gestures. Yeah, he's got gestures tattooed on his legs. My whole leg, this, all this is a gesture. Coincidentally. It is. All this is a gesture. Wow. The gesture's all the way up my, my whole leg right here. But yeah, the gesture was always, was always like the spy of the court. He's the one that knew everybody's business. Yeah, man. The most intelligent there. So um, interesting that you know this is a, this Latin we've actually had it like you know translated and it essentially says and this place is not what you think. What? Yeah, this place is not what you think. It says in this Latin. Wow. And also, um, you know, this thing. There's so many clues in it. You've got no Great Lakes, but California is linked. Really. Um, but this middle bit here is directly over the North Pole. And then it shows these two bells coming off, and in one of the bells, or this thing here, is what looks like a luminary <laughs> that is sort of like magnetized, or, or not even connecting, if you, if you know what I mean. You know, there's a thousand and one clues with the fool's cap map. This is what it's, it's essentially telling you that, you know, this isn't a Tyrius map, so the projections are going to be totally off anyway, but it still shows this continent is coming up as high as, as, as the tropics, which would be hot. You know, there and there, which makes no sense in one day. But yeah, no, we'd be following these coding systems, these um, interlocking systems, these these things you can see here with these Phoenicians on there for quite some time, and they are detailed codes and for decoding. And um, there's a bigger image you can find that shows you what all of these gold coins say. Okay, and there, there is stuff in Latin written on all of them, and it's all very cluey indeed. But essentially, it tells you that the realm you're living in is not what you think. So, here's an old Chinese map. They're doing the same again. The old ice wall all the way around us. 
and the land masses of I guess in Asia, Africa mm -hmm. and Europe in the middle. But again, ancient Chinese cartography is showing essentially a flat earth map with land all the way around with what looks like tropical trees. So or ice. But stuff all the way around us. So this is an interesting map. Now Square and Stationary Earth, Orlando, for Fer Orlando Ferguson's famous map, okay? So it's, there's, there's issues with it, you know, because it sort of shows that it's, it's a cup shape, which sort of shows that it's going like concave. But that's only the contour lines, okay? It's an optical thing. It shows you a third luminary over the North Pole. Not a pole star, a third luminary, which is really interesting because there could be something blacked out up there which causes um, weird ass eclipse because I can tell you the sun ain't, the moon ain't showing up to do that. There's no correlation between the both. Um, and it will show you the four angels on the corner of the square and stationary earth as I've proposed many times. I think that this is a, you know, a key to the basically the Taurus field um, structure or the electromagnetic structure of the model of this place. But um, you were telling me about the um, the elliptical plane, or the mm -hmm. equatorial plane. Yes. Yeah. So that would be mm -hmm. where this bit is. That's, yeah. where, that's, that's where all the movement in the heavens. Is. So it's there. It's right there. Yeah. The object of Phoenix in 1764, in the month of May, seen by half a million mm -hmm. Europeans, it came straight out of the north and passed over the south. Hmm. And the rest of the scientific community ignored it because they say no objects can move like that. And yet, astronomer Hoffman recorded that in his telescope, and half a million Europeans watched it happen in the sky. Hmm. Hmm. It's interesting how there's um, like sort of ice all the way around and everything is lower, but it's essentially um, a flat earth map, there are many mysteries. Wow. So um, you can see giant, what you see on a load of Middle Ages maps is giant sea creatures that seem to be eating boats and these giant whales, no problem. Hmm. Humongous sea creatures that are bigger than a galley. That just no problem eating them. Apparently, sailors are really, really scared of all of this uh, sea creatures. I even got warned myself when I was in the Merchant Navy. Watch for the sea snakes; they can pull you over. I was like, "What? Really?" Apparently, it's a thing. So this is a vortex, okay? A whirlpool, a giant whirlpool that is off the coast of Norway. Mm. Um, you can there today, but I think it was much, much bigger. Um, and it would swallow ships. It would swallow ships if you went too near it. You would be sucked in and swallowed them. So is that a reality that you've got animals and critters that big? Well, I'm guessing if it was a, a sort of vapor canopy type affair, that would not be a difficulty to have things that big. I'm not sure what the red man is there. It's a bit weird. So that is uh, the coast of Norway. And obviously, it's a lot more knobbly than that. That's poor photography. Uh, here is from a um, mind blowing. This is because this is from this is Norway and Scandinavia from a Kirchner book, the 1700s. And what he's showing is this get to where Lapland is, so it's supposed to be really, really cold. Going from that famous vortex, which I just showed you in that Middle Ages picture, which is here. So then there's a subterranean tunnel which goes the whole length of Lapland from Norway to Finland. Must be a thousand miles. Wow. Yeah. And you can see him in the south as well, connecting up the Caucasus, giant underground tunnels which are mapped. And I kind of thinking because this tunnel ends where that whirlpool is, that there's some sort of connection. You know, that may be, you know, whirlpool, you know, might be even a way to the inner world. You know, that's what they show you in Pirates of the Caribbean, guys. He goes down a wormhole. Uh, uh, and in um, Wizard of Oz, how does she get to another dimension? She goes into a twister. Yeah? These vortexes, I think, it might be some sort of technology. So here's that steel plate. Uh, we know the Bermuda Triangle, that's what the pilots were reporting, but the sky is, is corkscrewing. Yeah, that green Yeah, it's like, it's like the fall, it's like the yeah. clouds all of a sudden break off into a two-dimensional picture. Like, they're just painted, and they just start corkscrewing. It's like the whole. That's why I believe we're in a we're in a we're in a simulacrum. We're in, we're in an artificial construct. Yeah. Exactly what you just said. The yeah. vortex is corkscrewing. I really do that's think that is. that's what they're using to you know to to jump. <clears throat> I really do. Um, 
And they show you in numerous movies. If you remember, um, years ago I followed a series, American series, Time Tunnel, when I was a kid. It was one of my favourite programmes ever. You must be old. I ain't never heard of that yeah, one. Yeah, Time Tunnel. They used to go to the Wild West on each of Rome. And they used to go through, a, a, basically, a vortex. So, yeah, this is that steel plate uh, cartography I was mentioned earlier. But it's got this giant lake where Oregon and the other states are supposed to be. Which is not there today, but it's mapped. So... That place there was still underwater after the flood. So this is a Gleason's map. We all know the Gleason's map. You know, it's been. They say he says it's accurate, but it's been debated for years now. It's quite boring. But somebody said to me, I thought it was interesting. Is a le is the letter Q a clue? Put it over a flat Earth map and see what happens. So I did. Put Q over um, the Gleason's map, and it lines up with exactly where. Uh, Fiera del Fuego is and what is supposed to be the way to Antarctica, Western Antarctica. It might be, is the cue a clue? Who knows? So this is interesting, this is an old map but it shows you the Imperial Palace in Beijing, in, in Peking, okay? But it says Ville de Tartary because at that time it's Tataria. But you see Ville the Chinese which seems to have a lower sort of power but there seems to be there. I find it interesting the Chinese are worshipping Temple of Sol, Solio, uh, you know, so they got a Temple of Sol, so it's Babylonian type beliefs, um, and it, overwhelmingly it also looks like it might be something to do with uh, the inside of the computer. I'm going to show you some mind-blowing images in a little while, you may not be now. So what we're looking at here is um, a, basically a graphic or a pencil drawing of the inside of a computer, central processor, um, cooling fans, um, heat sinks, and the rest. No, actually, it's not. This is um, an artwork of Rome by Piranesi in the 1700s. Okay, yeah, it's identical because we've matched them and we've layered them on Flat of British, and they are literally showing <coughs> to be just like computer. Thank you, Desi, for the donation to Martin. And those of you who donated, mention Martin's name. Don't worry, he'll get it out of me. Okay? <laughs> oh, don't even so worry. <laughs> I if, appreciate that. Question. If he doesn't, if he doesn't eat it in steaks tonight, he'll smoke it. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad. I haven't even had one for hours. Anyway, so <laughs> you know what your central processor looks like—a computer in your computer. <clears throat> yeah, it's got the same four angels type of affair, <clears throat> like the structure of this place, but. That is not actually a computer component, although it's identical. Again, it's a Piranesi artwork showing Rome. That's amazing. It is mind blowing, and you can literally, it literally is identical to a central processor of today's modern computers. So, were the layouts of these ancient cities, which we've proposed now for quite some, you know, about three, four years, um, basically uh, circuit board, um, basically computing? Were cities computing or cumulating, or are they even making the simulation that we find ourselves in? Something could be generating it. What's going on with Mexico City? <coughs> so Mexico City is the centre bit, and the rest of it's got a giant sea around it, full of ships, so I'm guessing it's really big, and then this green surround full of towers and cities all the way around it, and an adjacent lake. And that's not what you find in the modern day, although you know, Mexico City is a ridiculously big city, and this bit was in the centre. So, uh, just a crazy layout. I can't imagine what they're thinking. But again, nothing like what they show you. I'll tell you one day. Kirshta again. Now, I'm going to show you this because later on you're going to see the significance of it. Is this aquifer, which is under the Gobi Desert, which is the depression over the Gobi Desert, which is regarded as the eye. Okay? Giant desert, and it just makes no sense. It's a great depression in the landscape which you can see on the maps but on Kirsten's maps it's a giant underwater aquifer maybe a thousand miles long Kirsten's maps is an aquifer but in other maps it's an open sea I'll show you now uh, no so, it's so a dry dust bowl desert in the Gobi Desert I'll show you why so, so what on. happened was at, at one time it was full of water and then it imploded it emptied of water yeah and it became the dry area. Without showing you the pictures that I got to go with it, essentially that, yes. Okay. You're going to see. I'm just logically thinking it out. So, um, this giant aquifer, again, maybe a thousand miles in diameter or more, um, is under the, 
the Amazon rainforest, mm. right? It looks to be man-made, it's so cylindrical. I bet it's a giant aquifer, it's been mapped by Kirschter, he hasn't included Antarctica in any of his works, but he shows you the Suez Canal there before it's actually, 150 years before it's actually rebuilt, uh, showing their lying. So again, Piranesi, Giovanni Piranesi's artworks, he shows the post-reset world, he witnessed it, and he shows you, you know, Piranesi's prisons and Piranesi's Roman architecture, which shows you a shattered, smashed world. So, all of it looks like computer co you know, components, all of it is very, very sophisticated mathematically, you know, but yet, we're looking at the plan for ancient Rome, apparently. Somebody says they don't see any mention of Star Forts on any of these old maps. Well, that's what we're just getting to. Somebody's what? right on the money for Look the next that. image the next was Star Forts. Somebody's yeah. sinking us, somebody's sinking. Yeah, somebody anticipated us. Yeah, Star Forts. So we're going to talk about these. These, I'll show you on many. These are everywhere in the world. Okay, guys. They are super futuristic technology in the past. I so agree. They make no sense for the narrative. The official narrative is these were built in 1600s, 1700s, a little bit earlier, maybe in Americas, but they were supposed to be bastions, okay? A defensive place for <laughs> armies to be. But unfortunately, these exhibit um, fractal geometry and cymatic patterns, all set at different frequencies. It is super <laughs> stealth, super reflective, because these sloping walls could deflect the way that stealth bomber technology does, yeah, sound waves maybe, maybe some sort of electromagnetic weaponry, or water, or water. I think these things could be underwater. So all of the maps are completely wrong and off. Um, the standard locator they give you in a school, okay, is this map here, which they teach you with. They show you the Greenland is this massive, massive thing at the top of the map, but in reality, it's only one fourteenth the size of Africa. So you've got to imagine if Greenland's only really that big, what about all of that displaced water, this non-existent land mm. that they show you on the map? What's happening there? Mm. Everything is politically motivated on the map. You know, powers get bigger countries, like Britain looks all like it's the centre of, you know, like it's a really big island, but mm. it's not. It's a really, really small island. Probably wouldn't even be visible on the world map. Mm. It's just everything is exaggerated. So there's more of Piranesi circuit boards. Mm. And we find um, an atlas and a collection of mm. atlases, but they were for giants. This is a giant book. It's wow. two people to <laughs> old era. Okay. <coughs> um, I've also got a collection of photographs of giant music books that apparently have been written by giants. So they're just huge. Why they made the effort to read by make a giant book that human beings our size can't really read. You know, you, you can't lift that up, can you? you know? Gaia, Gaia Sonoma readings. Yeah. It's an excellent thank you, Martin and Jason. Send a picture of a half pound steak. <laughs> nice. Do you see? I had the best <coughs> best food ever here, guys, and the weather is <coughs> fantastic. Jahara was real real clear to say my, my donation <coughs> was for Martin. Oh, actually. <laughs> my, my, Thanks, brother. My moderators are turning on me. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. So, yeah, uh, many um, places, like um, this is Palmyra, um, but many ancient sites, um, Pesopolis will show you, the, uh, you know, the third side perspective is, again, you get like what looks like a circuit board. Again, like a central processor in the computer and heat sinks and it all actually maps out. So the Asian world seems to be um, like doing a circuit board city and I think the modern cities are doing pretty much similar today. Okay. So some of these, this is the Viennese, yeah, this is the Vienna uh, star fort, um, which is very unusual because it only shows one church machine um, inside the star fort. Mm -hmm and some sort of building here but this town seems to be missing and um, what you see in here is entrenchments outside leading up to these star forts which to my mind would be if from the their sort of explosives or cannonballs what they're saying at the time just bounce off these things guys it make you know it's just not for the the world that they say they were built in these are higher technology these are super futuristic fractal technology okay so this tower you can see on the left is in Iran, 
and the image on the left is out of the Boynich manuscript which is anomalous we don't know who the author is we don't know you know I feel that it's a definite watery thing I think it's a Phoenician thing but they do show large plants large fauna and large animals in the Boynich manuscript so it could be just a you know post event text which they're showing us but that might be a clue because there's water inside this and this could be some sort of water tower Looking yeah, the voyage, the voyage manuscript is still mysterious. There are still the videos being put out by people saying they decoded it and all. But uh, <clears throat> I'm just telling you now, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on any decodes of the voyage manuscript uh, at this point because I haven't seen anything compelling. I just see a lot of a lot of guesswork. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, is the United States military crypto cryptologists have the sophi most sophisticated software in the world, and they put it on. They put the Voynich manuscript to the test. And let me tell you something, they can't make heads or tails uh, out, of this, out, of, out of this manuscript other than identifying their pattern recognition search has identified enough to know that this is a definitive language. There's communication going on here. They can see the patterns, but what it is, they have no idea. So, hmm. yeah, these, these videos all coming out talking about that, we decoded the, the Voynich and all that. Uh, listen, you, are, you guys already know my mantra. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Yeah, that's a good, good point, that is. So, as you can see, um, star forts are always built on water. They seem to have an island left in a lot of them in between. And basically, the water is fed into them. So, the water is part of this circuitry, you know. But as you can see, this is advanced technology. It's fractal bursting out uh, by nature. It's got a stunning fractal geometry um, included in it. Uh, the mathematics is, you know, like off the radar. This example, they're trying to tell you that this citadel here in Lille, in France, um, was built in with when the when it's supposed to be humanities on horse and carriage, and still jucking, throwing buckets of piss out of the window. Apparently, bring out your dead. <laughs> that sort of mentality. Yet yeah, they're building things that look like something out of Star Trek. You know. It's, you can see how it cogs in, how it fits in, and it's just twisted to, you know, an angle, just offset every time a bursting out. That's fantastic. That is mind-blowing. What is going on with them? I think they were probably resonating, giving off a frequency, an acoustic frequency. This is the hedgehog style, we call it. This is Hamburg's <coughs> Starfort in the past, and it is, the entire city is inside it. What you're going to find for the bombing campaigns of World War One and Two is they were attacking Star Fort Rotterdam. The entire center was blitzed, even though the mayor had surrendered. And all you see is inside of the Star Fort destroyed. Outside is still standing. That's crazy. S same for Eep. Yeah, the Eep silence in the World War One. All you see is the Eep silent. The Star Fort predominant. Everything inside there is vanished. They just they're hitting the Star Fort with uh, modern day they're still hitting these in the, you know in in the last wars so yeah uh Hunnigan, um, on the rhine is um something scientific going on you quite, can't quite make it out but look this one on the one side and this year is just super futuristic for people apparently with rudimentary cannons and muskets and stuff there's no need for something that looks like that the top bit looks like it might be a piston you know Mm -hmm. pushes in and out like the whole thing looks like a side slice of a one cylinder engine is what I see okay but more more um, more fractal or more geometrical look at that so this would these would have been built prior to cannonading right yeah well um, I got one narrative I found in an old Dutch book where um, no sorry a, a Polish book where um, some guy he went to the Polish king and he said look all of these um, forts that are all over the countryside, I think we should utilize them. So they were over the countryside and they weren't being used. So these things were there already. I'll show you some evidence of these things being blitzed in some, some extent. Um, but these things were there already. I think after a reset, they've been repurposed. I think these things go super deep and I think they're at some sort of doorway or a way to get uh, to this underground world. Okay. Because the Hopi Indians, they said, oh, who built all of this stuff? You know, where they're from? Oh, the people? Oh, they arrived from the stars. Now, did they mean the stars? Or did they mean the, the star, star forts? forts? Yeah. So, who for fort? 
you know they gone to the efforts you know you can look at the you know the defi- you know how defined they are hey, total 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 nutter nutter said jason should start a new channel martin just stole this one <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm only part of it for 10 minutes bringing some map yeah, stuff to you guys and then it's about then it's not jason but you can see, yeah, this is one off of Sylvia's channel, um, New Earth, Megalith.org, and she's captured, you know, the remnants of a star fort, but what looks like a mud flow that is half on it and half over it. Hmm. Okay, you can definitely <coughs> see the rest of the star fort is missing into this, uh, what looks like a mud flow, exactly like a mud flow. So, yeah, there's a lot. I've been in a star fort myself. I went in one a year ago in um, England. So, um... Imagine an event like a Phoenix event, and maybe if it came from the West, whatever, okay, and then it skips and rips apart the whole of North Africa, the whole of Arabia, across the Levant, across Persia, and then it lands on the Mongolian Eye, the Gobi Desert, exactly where that aquifer is being showed in your maps. Wow. Isn't that a coincidence? And then you can see the line. Yes, and it ends there, sort of thing. <laughs> like something's just like you know, some sort. Of and it doesn't continue in the Americas, no, because that exact same line is doesn't. nothing but jungle, with a bunch of Mayan and Olmec. It's all Oaxia in Veracruz state. Yeah, you can attribute that to being an equatorial state. Yeah, because that's, but it's that's not. the spin they put on it. Yeah, exactly. So, so that makes sense because if you look at the Americas, you don't see that same line of desert. It's all jungle straight across, straight across the Yucatan. Yeah, that's a good point. So it's only there, isn't it? You can see a similar thing where Australia and um, South America is, uh, South Africa, I'll show you in a minute. Is that the Terran Basin? Sorry? Is that the Chinese Taklan Macan Desert? Um, this is the Gobi Desert. That's the Gobi? In Mongolia, yeah. Right. yeah, and some of it. Because they got a Tibet. bunch of deserts in that area. they got the Gobi, the Taklan Macan. One, one of the biggest deserts in the world, In the, the Terran Basin. Yeah, yeah, I think um, the Great Western Desert is the second From biggest, and I think that's the third. That's well. amazing. So Port Royal, Jamaica, a bit like Galveston in Texas. I went to visit the other day. It's got a little star fort on it. Um, it was regarded as being the wickedest city in the world and the whole city sunk into the It sand. was a Phoenix phenomenon. Uh, a I've, Phoenix. Told my, I've told my viewers about uh, Port Royal. The, the, it was a pirate city. You got it. And one, one day they woke up about 10 o'clock in the morning and this, the ground was vibrating at such high intensity yeah. that people literally sank into the ground. They watched each other helplessly just sink into the ground thousands of pirates man tried to run out to their ships in on the beach and in the water they just sank into the ground men drowned in two feet of water because they couldn't stand up all the sand underneath them everything even the ocean was vibrating but the vibration flattened the ocean all around port royal royal because the ground was vibrating it just so it's so weird but uh, mm-hmm. the city remained intact, mm-hmm. and it was it was just crazy that anything that wasn't on a solid foundation just sank into the ground. Moments later, the survivors were looking around. All the animals had gotten quiet. Everything was still a beautiful morning, and it was almost as if about two thousand people didn't just sink into the ground in front of you. Wow, it's bizarre as hell. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, liquefaction, that rapid liquefaction, yeah. the highly localized liquefaction like that, that's that's that, that's a product of the Phoenix phenomenon. It makes you wonder why they built this city on, you know, sand <coughs> anyway, a sand spit. Yeah. But, yeah, that is crazy. Yeah, it's famous. Uh, it's a famous destruction. Yeah, really, really bad one. Kept a lot of people away from Port Royal after mm-hmm. that. Uh, yeah, there's that swathe there. So imagine, and then it's landed there. Mm-hmm. And that is what was an aquifer, so... Some heat has evaporated, unless it is under the Gobi Desert, which is Crazy. a possibility. There's the eye there. As you can see, it's just north of mm-hmm. Nepal. It's all sand. It's all sand. It's all sand now. It's a river there, but yeah, so that would have been full of water, I guess. Somebody made a really interesting comment on another channel. I think it was Static in the Attic, because yeah. I was going through his comments one time, and they said, they said, if you really want to know what the old world looked like, just put water, just draw new maps and put water everywhere you see sand. <laughs> That's a good one. We said. Yeah. I thought about really I thought about that ever since. I think I'll do it. Everywhere you see sand, just put water and you'll see what the old world no, looks like. I'll do that. Yeah, that's a good idea, static in the attic. <laughs> so that's um, how many star forts are in Europe alone. That many. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So you, you can know, have you done a Google of North America? Because there's quite a bit in, in I have I've got a collection um, I got from a, a famous star fort guy called Gil Gibley who's in Ireland and he made a video and he just shows you all the American ones. It literally is like hours and hours and hours of star forts. You wouldn't wow. even believe um, 
The Statue of Liberty is built on a star fort, guys. Fort Wood. Yes, it there, is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there's the, the, the uh, literally around New York. New York itself was a star fort. I've already posted about that a month ago. The whole thing. It was star fort, Liberty Islands, uh, Governor's Islands, or star fortage and across in Brooklyn. So, not connected with maps, but I thought you might find this interesting because we're moving on now. I think that's it for the for the mm -hmm. map for the moment with the maps. Mm -hmm. Is um, this happened in the Capitol building? Under the Capitol building, they dug it all out and it exposed mm -hmm. all of this. You may ask yourself, what is all of that under the Capitol building? So mm -hmm. during the, um, I think it was the Reagan administration. Capitol building in the United States. Yep, that's the Capitol building there. If you can see all the pillars underneath. Mm -hmm. So it has a substructure. So uh, yeah, apparently it was built in bunkers and stuff, but it just goes to show that there's a massive, some sort of installation in front of the lawn, in front of the Capitol building. But you got the, what is this architecture here? What is these columns here? It's old, dude. Right? It looks old. Yeah. I've seen other photographs where it looks like some openings going in and stuff. But yeah, so there's old uh, worlds underneath the Capitol building. This is um, the map of heaven and earth, and it's a beautiful little map. It shows you giant beasts in what they called Antarctica, dragons, okay, and you know green trees because Antarctica is nothing like what they tell us. And you've got one great lake, maybe two. I don't kind of phone is connected, but you've got all of that land above. All of these here, some of them are no longer there. And what you find is above it, they have purgatory, okay? Purgatory. You even got the ferry, uh, the ferry map there. All over the river sticks. Yeah, exactly that. It's a beautiful <coughs> map. You show you comets, comets up in the firmament there. Comets that are you know attributed to being weapons like swords, and uh, fiery stuff going on in the firmament as well. So um, they got the angels there, Michael, and whatever. But yeah, that's um, heaven and earth map, the heaven and earth map. So interestingly, we've been talking about Admiral Byrd quite a lot. We were talking about it on Paranormies, uh, talking about, you know, Operation High Jump, uh, Fishbowl, etc. And here's Admiral Byrd in front of the Azimuth or Equidistant map in, 19, in 1955. So, you know, why would they use the Flat Earth map? There's no Antarctica on there when he's famous for going to Antarctica. Right. It makes zero sense unless they're just duper's delight and rubbing our faces in it, which is what's going on. Okay. So we're going to have a look at some comedy now. Just whip through, whip through a few of adverts from antiquity, which are awkward. And they've used, let's just say sex to sell. Okay, so sex sells. But this is a chocolate bar called Old Dick. That was sold in the past. <laughs> okay, she yeah. likes old dick. Okay, so this, <laughs> yeah, this is my ladybird book. Oh, this is my, my favourite one. This is where I learned when I was you about. Show this on your channel. Oh yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. You are getting trouble. All will be well. Nobody dies. It's fantastic. So my first joint ladybird book. I had that when I was four or five. That's where I learned. Okay. Oh, taste the bush. That's a nice point. You're pouring, you're pouring my gin. Well, I'm not! I'm not! <laughs> I lost my virgin virginity, but I still have the box it came in. These are adverts. This is not me. Okay? Okay. This is a good book. How to Hurt Your Own Feelings. Wow. Yeah, that's important. And tablets you can buy these days. The fi Finally, a solution. Fuck it all. Okay, depressed, you've got terrible. problems. Yeah, <laughs> overworked. Very family terrible. troubles. Just take four fuck it all daily and then you don't even have to worry about things like that's that. terrible yeah this is terrible uh, love enjoy the benefits <laughs> of a cordless massager are you sure that's what it's for because i'm just saying you know if your daughter came you know across the room and she's like got this uh near face i'll be like Can you put that away so here's a pop group that i'm going to join okay i'm going to find these the, the, the marty's look they got really <laughs> tight trousers on guys look that's obscene <laughs> So, I'm going to get tight, tight trousers on, I'm going to join the Marty's, I'm going to be their lead singer, okay, because I'm going to be <coughs> famous. When will I be famous? This is a good book, science fiction book by I.G. Green, The Quest for a Face and a Dick. Indeed, if you find yourself on another world without a face and a dick, that's the first thing you're going to find, want to do. The Lady Book Book, The History of Fleetwood Mac. Here you go again, you say, you want your freedom. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to need backup. Karen is being a cunt. Yeah, copper, Karen is being a cunt. Always. 
Okay, Joan says, mm, I enjoy seven inches every morning. I think she's talking about orange juice. Mm. That's just your bad mind. Okay, but Joan Crawford, there's something definitely wrong with Wait, her. Is that Joan Crawford? That's Joan Crawford. That is Joan. That is John Crawford. Wow. She had some sort of weird case going on. She's um, she's a bit of a nutter, but that might be just the film. This is disgusting. This was hanging up in America. Okay, it's amazing what you can do with just two fingers and a thumb. Oh boy, oh boy, sure can work up a first. Now that is really disgusting, but there you go. That's the adverts. Seven up, guys. Yeah, weird thing is you only got five fingers. This was um for political campaigning for N Richard Nixon. So everyone wore badges in America which say um, they can't lick our dick or we like dick <laughs> or well done dick. So this was um, campaign uh. measures. I don't know what the lobbyists were thinking. They might have been on drugs. I don't know. Ooh, this is a good advert. Fabulous <laughs> making points. Our muffins uh. are moist and sticky just like Fanny's. <laughs> Whoa! Well, that's all right, Jason. That'll, that'll be all right. Okay, Taco Bell destroyed my anus. <laughs> That's a very sad That's story. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. <laughs> oh, what about men? Love fannies. That's true. That's true. Okay, we're moving on. Have you seen this later book? Famous, famous uh, children's tale. Lady Rump Bird book. Yeah, Rumpel Foreskin. You ever heard that one? Yeah, it's a happy tale. Okay, how to find your evil twin in the back of your mind. That's not me, though. Okay. We accidentally amp amputated your dick. What the fuck? Ma'am, I need for you to calm down. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> run, run away train set. This show has gone off the rails. Yeah, we've gone off the radar. We're going to live it up, guys. Yeah? we got some fuck off spread oh, here. Keeps idiots and assholes away for up to four hours. Okay? Uh, this is what we were using in the last four years. Also, we were using this. Wiener cleaner soap. Okay? Don't need instructions, it's hard to work that. Okay. And this was an advert for Burger King. I think that's really, really wrong on so many levels, okay? Blow one and swallow. And they are cheeky enough to do that. So, happy times in playgrounds in 1900. Yeah, you could fall 40 foot, break your neck, no problem whatsoever. No one is going to actually tell you off or anything. All is good, okay? And that is in the playgrounds of old. Yeah, I was going to cover that. Auschwitz main camp. That's from above. My auntie was in there. She worked in this bit. Yeah. Um, avoid that. Yeah, hundred percent. And the map of Monte. It's a 1290 map, and I've seen it myself with my own eyes. It is in basically the head of a cathedral in England, and this bit is meridian, and this year is a cog, a wheel, which is basically Jerusalem. But you get loads of cryptids, a mermaid, giant creatures. Senna and all of these double-headed and uh, the Centurion, that's Babylon Tower. But yeah, it's amazing, it's made on animal skin, it's the oldest map you can view in the world. Really? Yeah, um, and it's from 1290 and it is fantastic. 1290, alright. 1290. So this is still 1290, it's still 70 something years after 1212, like the last Phoenix reset so before that this is, map was done. There you are. That's my lot there for presenting, I think we're back on camera now. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I hope you had a little giggle there. I'm not in too much trouble. Oh, I was too busy <laughs> monitoring the chat to really enjoy that. Okay. Right, what we got going on here? What would you do with so the So I'm OBS? just going to check my chat, check the chat up now. Okay, see, see what right. See what we want. All right. How heavy one is. <clears throat> yeah, guys, uh, I mark all Archaic's videos not for kids. Remember that. It's already in the settings. <laughs> yeah. It's too late now. I'm very sorry. I don't have a single video out of almost 480 videos that I've ever uh, marked for kids it's all adult content only even though a lot of them are inspirational I just do it because uh, the algorithm is just so picky when you have anything for kids yeah it is yeah they yeah. everything right. so I hope you enjoyed that oh why is Japan so big yeah that's um, also really really big in some of the maps is Japan um, wow. over exaggerated <clears throat> but it's politically motivated on a lot of the maps so. yeah man no, hey the maps are fascinating I, I'm glad that you got a uh, I'm glad that you you gave me access to all those files. I will be going through them. I know I'm going to be looking at the dates. I'm going to be comparing all these maps and all the dates on the maps to all the Phoenix resets. Uh, it's a really interesting topic. It's awesome. I'm, I'm really impressed by I didn't know that many maps existed. I had no idea. I've got thousands. Oh, thank you, guys. Thanks. Yeah, that's awesome. So, 
Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding, man. That was that was, that was pretty funny. I just <laughs> I never take those risks on my channel. Wow, but, it's nice to break things. But, but I do too. know that, that you're famous for it, and you've been getting away with it for a long time. I've been getting away with it for years. It's only comedy. It's all in the best possible taste. Right. And it you know makes people happy. So that's all it's about. Oh yeah, they loved it. I saw nothing but smiling faces. <laughs> somebody said somebody somebody just said that. Oh yeah, you just gave the the trolls a whole bunch of work with. Good. Good. The bottom feeders, they need something to do anyway. Yeah, they need something to do. They, they've done nothing but bless my channel. Exactly. All, the, they, all, all the trolls, they've, all they've done, man, is just send high quality people to my channel. They're, shouts, just, they're giving you shouts. They're yeah. bringing people to your channel. Yeah, so I mean, thumbs, me, you know, you know they, there's an old saying that uh, uh, mimicry is the, old, is, is the highest form of praise. That's so true. It it's is so true. true. It is true. No doubt. And flattery is the highest form of honor, they say as well. Although they're not flattering, eh? <laughs> yeah, man, that's a, that's awesome. So <clears throat> we still have what? What is today? The thirtieth? Yes. We uh, literally have ten days till the meetup starts in the morning. So we have ten days to the meetup. It's going to be in Spring Branch, Texas. Uh, for those for those of you who don't know, it's just it's North Houston, actually a little bit north of Houston. It's called Spring Branch, but uh, it's like a suburb of Houston. That's where we're going to have the meetup. Uh, tonight, tonight we'll, I'll probably just post it in a YouTube uh, community post. I'll just post it, and I'll post the actual address of where the meetup is going to be. Yeah. Uh, we are taking, uh, so it's not as it's not as formal as my first meetup on April first, when we were going into a lot of unknowns and didn't know what we were doing. We know what we're doing now, and uh, we have help. So uh, we will be taking cash at the door if you don't want to go to the meetup app or whatever you just want to show up see what's going on we'll take cash at the door too uh, believe me you'll be meeting big john at the door yeah <laughs> i've seen the venue yesterday it's a nice little venue and it's um, in, a, in a really nice area and it's <clears throat> oh we're gonna have a projector and show yeah. show all kinds of stuff too yeah right. and uh, people can you know bring their own food okay there are shops and amenities all around this area that you know you can bring your own freezer box and you know your own food with you and whatever you need. thank you ken ray so that would be on the tenth of June. <laughs> Mr. C Mr. C says Martin does Texas. <laughs> Sounds like some old seventies porn. Yeah, like Daisy does Dallas. Oh my god. Yeah, Let sure me get him out of my studio real quick. <laughs> <laughs> we almost had two thousand man. Oh sick. We were wow. hey, we were at nine thousand we were at one thousand nine hundred and ninety three, so <laughs> you started hitting us with all those dicks. Oh they killed it off. Yeah, they started. Oh, they started, started they're gonna come back. They started dropping off. Oh no. I killed the show. <laughs> I killed RKX, oh, guys. Oh, That's funny. Okay, my saw it destroyed. I'm that's sorry. all right. We'll go to archaics.tv and have a blast. <laughs> <clears throat> Humor is important. Yeah, laughing is important because it gives you vibration out. You know? That's right. Yeah, there's nothing better than a good bed in life. That's what I find. And it makes you remember as well. Oh, yeah, and at the, at the meetup on the 10th, for those of you who are coming, probably going to have a surprise guest, but also you bring your own igloos, bring your own drinks, bring your own food. Bring it. It's going to be a relaxed atmosphere for eight, nine hours. We're going to do, do several little presentations and uh, a whole bunch of picture rounds of pictures and, and, and hugs and all that shit. It's going to be epic. Can't wait. There's loads of uh, people, YouTubers and stuff going anywhere. I know a couple. And there's a few people that I know yeah. from America going. So, yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be something special, guys, this one. I can't wait for it. Yeah, I know some of the moderators here in Arcadia are going to show up, too. All oh, right. Yeah. And uh, people are traveling from far and wide. Somebody's coming down from Canada. Somebody's coming up from New Zealand. You know, so people are traveling far and wide. Yeah, to get this. So it's going to be a goodie. Make sure to get there, guys. <laughs> Don said we need to do a comedy show with Martin on Arcades. No, we don't. Uh, yeah, we do. Oh, she said Arcades.tv. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can do my, uh, you know, my, my gifts, my, um, do my um, Monty Python S type of humor. No, no, Jahara, when it comes to Spring Branch, it can be either airport, but I, I do think that Bush Intercontinental is still closer. Bush Intercontinental is closer to Spring yeah, Branch. It is. In the other airports, trash anyway. I, I'd always come into Bush. Fair enough. Yeah, man. So, hey, this is a really good show. Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, believe me, your donations to Martin, he will, he will be peeling me off those uh, every time. <laughs> I don't hold nothing back. Hey, uh, Thanks. Let's see. But, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be in the studio with Martin again. Uh, I don't know, probably 
two or three days. You guys know how we do it. As long as he's in Texas right here, we're, we're taking advantage of it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll probably do another presentation like we did the other day with the uh, 1871 book. Mm. But it, really, it's your turn to do a presentation. Well, yeah. I, I have me in the background. I will, too. I will, too. I'm going to maybe do that uh, Hapgood book. Because that's pretty fantastic. We've Hap- already covered it. Yes. We? See, check this out. We got this. Mi- oh. We got this uh, Charles Hapgood book Amazing. from 1955. The video you saw for me this morning, I read passages out of that about the Acumbaro discoveries. But the only reason I got that book from Book Tree Press in San Diego was because I wanted to cover that data and show you the pictures of what they found. However, the first half of the book is amazing, and it shows actual figurines, artifacts, and and actual photographs of discoveries of prehistoric-like vapor canopy creatures that have been found all over the world up until the last 10, 12 years. I'm talking about it. it's amazing shit. It's amazing shit. He's going to cover that. Yeah, it's just amazing. they got artifacts of <coughs> giant birds eating people. That's yeah, crazy. It's just mental. <clears throat> Absolutely mental. But it's good supporting evidence, I think, anyway. Oh, yeah. Really good discovery. Oh, yeah. So the only reason people think it's vapor canopy is so weird is because they've been brainwashed to believe that 65 million years ago all these creatures walked the earth when they didn't. They're almost right under the topsoil. They're right here. They're giant reptiles and giant amphibians. They weren't dinosaurs. And they happen to exist at the exact same time as the megafauna, and that's a problem. If mastodons and woolly rhinoceroses and three-toed sloths lived at the same time as little domesticated puppy dogs, at the same time as humans, at the same time as architectural structures, well, and, and, and spoons and knives and clay, all this pottery and pyramids, if all these existed at the exact same time, according to all these archaeological discoveries, then we have a problem. And that problem is, is the dinosaur narrative and the Ice Age narrative is total bullshit. And these maps prove it, because we just saw maps that that show many of these areas didn't have ice on them 600 years ago. So, anyway, that right there sums up our show. Are you got anything left to say? Um, no, just looking forward to uh, meeting up with uh, my brothers and sisters from America. If you come mm-hmm. to the meet and uh, get a hug off you, and um, I love you. And I just want to say thank you to the Americans for making me so welcome. It's been mm-hmm. awesome. Also, thank you for Jason for letting me hijack his show. Uh, for you know being a brilliant host Jason thank you so much he's got me a, give me a coin and they are fantastic <coughs> yeah so make sure to get your your archaics coin coinage because they are very juicy alright Matt go and hit that outro thanks Matt you know we like to listen to our own outro, outro. fat thumbs and much love oi oi woohoo says Pamela well anyway that beautiful beautiful noise thank you Thank you.